right. We back. Cheers, fellas. What's up, brother? Cheers to you, sir. We back. Another episode. This one, eh, it could go any different. Who knows? We'll see. There's rails. Not guaranteed if we're going to go off them or not. You know, it's just one of those, just one of those topics where everybody's kind of set in their ways. And yeah, yeah. You don't want to. Well, actually, I don't care who I offend. So, um, <laughs> talk more, buddy. So, <laughs> um, I'm big into like detective shows. I love them. They're fun. Been watching them my whole life. But I don't know how you guys feel, but I kind of I like the new stuff. It's okay. Like NCIS 50 million and CSI 17 trillion and all the spin-offs and they're okay. Yeah. But I really 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 dig the old school stuff. Like we're talking Monk and Columbo okay. and I'll even go as far as saying In the Heat of the Night was a pretty damn good cop detective show. I don't know. What do you guys what do you guys dig? Let's let's go with the let's go with the normal scales that we go through. So OG, do you prefer the old school detective shows or are you more into the new school? Uh, there was uh, Mickey uh, Mickey Spleen, Mike Hammer. Uh, that came out. I think it was like early eighties. Uh, I love detective movies. I love it. I love what they do. I love where they're going. Um, there's a lot of storytelling that's missed for later generations. People don't get that. Yeah. Like there's a lot of like good storytelling um agatha christie uh, you know, some of those were uh, okay i'm following you you know there 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 there's people that can tell those uh, murder mystery yeah um i love that stuff yeah. it's fun it's i think a lot of people are so reticent to get to the end that they forget the story where I'm and what I think we're talking about is getting through the story it's yeah. fun to have that adventure yeah yeah what about you doctor you like the uh, you like the old school or new school yeah I, I prefer the old school more than the new uh, because all of the new stuff is based on true events and stuff that's really scary and that can happen. Whereas the old school, you know, uh, Dragnet or Mannix or Ironsides, yeah, Ironsides any, any one of those old school ones, you know, they talk about, you know, the dangers of marijuana and the hippies are going to kill your children in a minute. You know, it was all said to scare you, but it came more from an entertainment value yeah. uh, than it did from... Uh, you know, hey, this is the DNA that we found on this cigarette, but, you know, a half a mile from the scene and we can connect it to whoever uh, rented out a library book, you know, and that, you know, they can connect the dots. Yeah, jo Joey yeah. Shimoli rented XYZ. And, yeah. 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 And it's like and, one, and, of, one of my friends from high school is like, <laughs> he works in forensics. He was like, yeah, nothing works like that on TV. He was like, I wish we could solve every crime in, in an hour, he said, but we can't. So, yeah. Yeah, and I, I think that's kind of what it is for me too. Like, like we enjoy NCIS. We've enjoyed it like since the beginning. You know, the forensics part of it's cool and everything like that. But then when we go back and we hit Hallmark and all the other channels and like the Columbo marathon is going on, I'm in heaven. Like, I don't know. It's not all just solely based because, you know, Peter Falk was awesome in anything that he did, mm -hmm. but just the way that he portrayed Columbo and the way he figured stuff out, 
without any of the fancy equipment that they have today. And he was always one step ahead and smarter yeah. than everybody he else. He was always smarter than And he didn't criminal. have OCD yeah. like Monk or he didn't have yeah. psychic yeah. things like in Psych or anything where he had a photo. He, he just, just knew what was going on and he could tell somebody was lying from a mile away. And he never changed his poker face. He was always just like, all right, I have a question. This is bothering me. And then just like, you told me you were at the the grocery store at six (laughs) o'clock. And, you know, he knows everything before he even asks it. So he was... he's like, don't try to bullshit me before. I know the answer before I even finish my question. And that was the best part because you knew when he figured out who it was. Yeah. Because he would always stand there and be like, all right, just one more question. Yeah, and then he, be would like, always, he would always five say, of them. He was just giving all the criminals <laughs> enough rope to hang themselves with on every episode. <laughs> he just, he knew. Oh. Can, can, can you think of, can you think of a, a, a comedy or a detective story that did that prior? I mean, go back. Think about it. Like, what? You're a smart man. Like, there was always, you know, there was always, you know, whether it was like even modern day stuff with like, I remember Tim Roth had a show called Numbers. Oh, Numbers was good. Numbers was very good. And he did a lot of that stuff. And even if you want to go, I'll even go into like the horror genre a little bit with Hannibal. When that was on TV, that was some fantastic cat and mouse stuff true where, where you know you know will graham yeah. was the cop and hannibal lecter was still the psychiatrist and all that and he knew something was wrong but he was just like you know this guy can't be this smart to know enough about this kind of stuff without dabbling in it in some way shape or form so he always kind of kept him at arm's length and and like i said the stories were really really cool on that but it was that one wasn't so much it was csi kind of but it was more like street smart cop intellect that got him through that and hunches that he knew something was wrong and that he had to to fill in the it was just a matter of i know a to c but i gotta fill in b somewhere to make this all connect before i can figure out what's going on yeah 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 i see that i see that so (laughs) i have a question man and so does that make, uh, you know, what was it? Uh, Tom Selleck. What, what Magnum P.I.? Magnum P.I. Magnum like, P.I. Does that, like, does that make it cheese? Oh, that was, yeah, that was high was quality. Was it pure cheese? Yeah. That was, I, high, you know, high quality <laughs> cheese. It was just like, you know, so. there's only You're so like, many crimes that can happen in Hawaii. And it's just, yeah. You know, <laughs> Cause see, and that's and and that's the thing, and that's where, like, in my head, I spin around things because then, so you bring that up, which then spins me into Hawaii Five O and Miami Vice, and yeah, yeah. oh, what was that? Oh, what was that USA? Uh, to to the nineties silk stockings, silk stockings, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That was like a combination of like softcore porn and crime drama. Yeah, all it, was yeah. Porn. it was so ridiculous. But yeah, I I think for those, all of those, like those were cheese for me. I couldn't like I just I didn't gravitate towards them. They didn't like pull me in. Yeah. But, like we already mentioned Columbo, like that had me even monk. Absolutely, like just Monk was mad. Yeah, his mannerisms, the way that he acted, the way that he figured things out, and every season was solid with him. And again, another incredible actor playing that lead role helped with yeah. that. Does eighties cheese cereal crime story? make a good detective story absolutely you it can yeah it can it can you know, there's there's always you know it's generational like i said it's you know things crimes or whatever that was uh, prevalent in the 60s 70s and 80s now we're in 2021 
it's you know cyber hacking or identity theft so, so or you could uh, think night rider and you could do a team and you can do yeah like i said it's it all it depends all follows it all the follows same. the same yeah. it's always it's always crime is the ultimate villain yeah. it doesn't have a name it doesn't have a face yeah. whether it's child trafficking or meth you know breaking bad made you sympathetic to drug dealers it made you, you know, root for the bad guys. That and, was, yeah. and you know, that was, you know, for more or less a cop and criminal drama. But it was like you felt bad for the guy because yeah. he started doing what he did because he had thought he had terminal cancer and he was doing this to provide a better life for his family. So he was really the anti-hero of that, even though he was peddling death on the streets of Arizona. You know what I mean? It's just... Yeah. It, it, it really twists your mind of, you know, when you were growing up, it was black and white. The good guys were white. The bad guys were black. You rooted for them. Now it's just like it, the, the, the script is flipped and you, you root for the bad guys now because they're, you know, they're doing what they think is best for their lives. If, if you, Maddie, maybe you can help or Dr. Tice, I'm sure you know, who wrote the A-Team? Mr. The guy that had the script that. Oh, uh, his name was Frank Cannell. Frank Cannell. He did a, a blip called Riptide. And it was this sh shitty. He did a lot of this stuff. And, you know, my friend, she uh, let me watch some episodes. He was behind Hunter. And, and Hunt, he, was behind, Dyer, and, uh, he was behind and, a lot of the 80s cop show where it was yeah. just like, it wasn't necessarily like crime that was going to turn the world on its axis, but it was just like, here was this guy taking care of pigeons on his roof. Next thing you know, the, the guy goes flying off his roof and the kid is just like, I don't know what happened. And then they found out that he had ties. And in he with had this. the hot lady that would take care of yep. it. He had yep. the hot detective that yep. would, is that for, the formula of the eighties is that was, what drove the detective movie? It, yeah, it was like buddy cop movies it in was, TV form. Yeah. It was just, you know. It was weird, though, because because the, the 80s was it definitely, they had their, there were their divisions. Like you had, this was more of a, this was more of a drama cop series. This was more of a funny cop series. This was more of a, it was very interesting because they kind of forced you to decide which ones you were going to watch based on their content. Cause there was a lot of competitive shows back then. And I guess it's still the same now, but they really are almost all the same now. And it's oversaturated where I can't even keep track NCIS of NCIS 20. Uh, what Miami city are they in? What law uh, is it? Yeah. Law and order special victims unit? Yeah. Is it all you can eat buffet? We don't yeah. know what they're fighting against now. And then, and then you have the which one is it? Is that Chicago? Well, there's Chicago PD, Chicago and PD, Chicago NYPD Fire, and Chicago, Chicago Fire. Yeah, like they have okay, here's. Our cop show, our ambulance show, our, our firefighter, firefighter show. show. <laughs> and, then, and then every month, we're going to bring them all together and do a special episode story. <laughs> right. Somebody dies. Oh, I don't know. <laughs> oh, no, went it's down just... to the bike shop and something bad happened. <laughs> it, does, it does just get boring with the same stuff. It's, it's oversaturated now, and it's all the same storyline. Like, if you watch any of them like all of the law and order is the same yeah you broke it off into svu and you broke it off into this and you broke it off into that but to your point earlier tice they're trying to take everything off of what really did happen because they use actual stories in their stuff mm -hmm. and sure and that's I, and I there's, that's i don't know i don't like it <laughs> I think it makes it too real almost. It was just like we watch TVs yeah. and movies to escape from the horrors of reality to just like, okay, I just want to sit down and I just want an old fashioned bank robbery or, you know, just something that's not going to make me feel yeah. like I got to take a shower afterwards. It's just like, you know, I want something simple, rolled up. I know the crime is going to be solved in an hour, not invest 55 minutes into law and order and be like, oh, by the way, that's on the search warrant, they had the color of the room wrong. We're going to have to let them go. And then that's the end of the episode. That, it, it, that's yeah. where I wanted to, I wanted to save this like a pocket 
a pocket win, but I wanted to bring up David Caruso. Oof. And I wanted to use CSI Miami. That was he, that show became the antithesis of that. That was a good balance of reality and yeah, cheese. Just, because he was, was so god awful. He and he it, always had the one liner. He always <laughs> had to take the sunglasses off. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> just, yeah. Like, I love that. And uh, it's. Or better yet, hey, one we haven't even mentioned. How about Miami Vice, where it was more style than substance? That's where it was where it was all pastels and neon, and the crimes were secondary. You just wanted to see what Crockett and Tubbs were wearing from one week to the other. You just wanted to see. Damn it, bring back TJ Hooker. What are you guys messing around with this for? Good Lord. Give me some Shatner. That's a, that's a great point, Maddie. You brought up TJ Hooker. Those crime dramas in the 80s focused on the crime. Yeah. In the 90s, they didn't. We touched on this, Tice. They focused on how they solve the crime. The legalities they, of it, of how they process the information and right, they had they, to do things. It wasn't, way. you know, Jojo cocaine guy, let's go kill him on the street. It was well, how? How? Why? Yeah. And they started asking all these like awesome questions, which I think was awesome. And it really changed how cop dramas were portrayed. Yeah. And then if you think about it in retroactively, with all the cop shows that came out in the 60s and 70s and 80s, that gave birth to the reality stuff of cops and America's Most Wanted, and Live PD, right. and stuff where yeah. they were just like, hey, these are real people, real detectives doing this stuff, and, you know, hey, we need your help. Here, and it's like almost audience LAPD interaction. For, yeah, 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 man. man. Yeah. What, what, what was the part that, ch- was it cops live? Like, like, was live television the part that changed it? Probably in social media had a lot to do with it, too, because, you know, yeah. like we were talking about before, if something happened and if it wasn't in your neighborhood, you knew nothing about it. Now, if something happens within five minutes, it's on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, you name it. It's out there for the world to see. Yeah. And I'll tell you what. The cops live PD. The way that they cut it, it's weird. Like, yeah. have you ever just sat there and watched it just to see what it's like? And they're like, all right, well, we got a dude walking around in Florida. Here's his here's his cop cam, blah, blah, yeah. blah. He's talking to somebody. Oh, we're going over to Texas now. Somebody's getting pulled over. Yeah, somebody's getting pulled over. And then, and then there's a vehicle <laughs> to Louisiana. And then nothing comes of it. Yeah. Oh, you don't have a license? Okay, make sure you yeah. get that taken care of. Shit, right. there's a dunk in the road. Let's, Fuck it. Let, let's, let's go so back to weird. Sticks, see what he has to say. <laughs> like... The live PD channel, it it's just super weird. Like I'll take I'll take cops the series yeah. over the live PD any well, day. Because you know every single thing that happens in cops, shit was going down. You knew something was gonna happen. Live somebody, PD somebody is was kind losing of like, their sneakers. Yeah. And they're oh, sure, yeah, and they're so shirtless so in the trailer like park. Nobody's they taking to their to the shirt model. off. <laughs> But it's just like live PD is kind of like the mon- it's like the NFL red zone. They just have 15 things going yeah. on at one time. Good and call. it's just like, okay, well, we'll go over here and see if something happens. Okay, nothing's happening over here. Let's yeah. go over to Florida. Let's go to Texas. Let's go to Pennsylvania. It's it's just so weird. I don't I don't know. How invested know. are you in like in the we're talking about cop series? Like I can remember being invested in Tony Shalhoub, you know, and what he did, and Columbo, and Mike Hammer, you know, and I can remember being invested in these, like, criminals and their anti-heroes and wanting them to figure out the crime. Yeah. What's the difference between watching those men, women, whatever, fighting the crime to make it oh, good justice and then having 
What's changed? Because a lot has changed because the way we view justice and the way we view. And it's the allure more of the criminal more than the people who actually saw. That's crimes. where I was. Yeah. Thank yeah. You. And, yeah. And the technology too, like the technology kind of made it easier for them to solve the crimes where the shows that we're talking about, the ones that invested us because we were like, all right, how's Monk going to figure this one out? What's he going to do? Oh, he's going to walk around the room. He's going to do He's going to make it metal and he's going to do he's, well. He's yeah. going to, he's going to pull you in. And then as soon as he sees that one thing, the camera's going to draw you in and you're going to see it. And then you're going to start to figure it out with him. Like the older shows were more of a play along with them help guess who took care of whoever find out who the shooter was but do it with the main character while watching the show it was definitely an even playing field in the older cop dramas than it is now and and now it's more like all right they show you who did the crime in the beginning you already know what's going on and now you're just watching it for them to see Okay, well, they're going to figure it out. They're going to use this machine that's going to tell you where the fabric came from, and they're going to do the DNA machine because that's going to tell you who did it. And then, oh, well, we we don't know. They're not in the system, so we'll drag the show on for 20 more minutes. Mm -hmm. The technology for me and the way that they they portray the shows now is what the turnoff is. Like, I don't want to start a show and see who the killer is to sit there to figure out how they're going to find them. I want to watch the show where it happened and I get to go along the journey with you. The to journey. Yeah. 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 The, old, not- the old, the old Vicky Spleen, the old Mike Hammer stuff did that. Um, was that 89, 87? Uh, it, it took you on the noir detective Journey. It definitely like a Maltese Falcon vibe to it. Yeah, and it just, yeah. Like, it just you know, he was the, just a gumshoe walking the streets of the city, and yeah. you know, he, you know, and and that's gone away, which is fine because technology has changed, so the detective has changed. That's awesome. Yeah. Um, but I I, I just don't see a show like Monk or a show like Mike Hammer or any of those things like happening now because the technology is that's because people want more right. reality in their life than fiction. right yeah maybe right. that's something we can touch on that yeah and th- and that's why like we get excited when we're just scrolling through on roku and we're like hey you know just show us what's happening with like i'll just keep using monk as, as an example Monk is a great example you know, because Monk is a genius movie. Speak into the remote and say, hey, what do yeah. you got going on? Where's Monk showing right now? And it'll give us the listings. And if we have that particular channel, we hop right over to it in a heartbeat, like anything like that. And not even, I but won't do- even go like cop shows anymore. Like just in general shows that will like pull us in. Because every weekend is a Harry Potter marathon. Like, they, they just, they're killing everything with doing this. So, when a Columbo comes on and it's like an all day marathon, I get happy because it only happens like twice a year where you get to yeah. like see this old stuff where the new stuff is always constantly being played over and over and over and over. Um, like, Warehouse 13, the librarian. That was a metal series, man. <laughs> those shows do the same thing for us. Like when they come up on that offset channel where they're doing like a mini marathon, we gravitate like, who cares if we know the words to everything that's going on in Warehouse 13? We watch the show anyway. It takes you back to a simpler time. You know, it's just, you know, me yeah. TV is fantastic for that stuff where they'll just run mar- And it's like, and then they do like the Koofy uh, cop shows, Car 54, Where Are You? Or, you know, you go, if you want to go even a little bit further, like maybe um, 
you know, Sledgehammer, which was off oh, of Mike that was Hammer, a sh- that was or a sh- the Naked Gun from the Files comedy, of Police yeah. Squad. Schlock they comedy, yeah. did the same thing, but just put a different spin on it, you know. And so, yeah, there was a good fair share of the comedy shows too. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I even like it wasn't. This one wasn't my favorite of all of them, but it kind of it's in the top ten. I mean, we've you know we've. We've got Columbo way up there. We got Monk up there. We got In the Heat of the Night, which was an awesome series yeah, on the phone. Also a good one. The way yeah. the way that they did it, but even uh, OG had mentioned Angela Lansbury, like Murder She yeah, Wrote. Yeah, Murder that She was Wrote. a good, yeah, solid show. They write it off as like, oh, that's just you know stuff my grandparents used to watch, but. That and Matlock, those were entertaining Matt shows. Lock. Like, yes. in, in my, that, in my elder that years, is it's fair. just like, I watch that. That's I'm like, you know, fair. Like, this is really some good, because some good that's, TV we're watching That's here. fair, man. That yep. is fair. Yep. I, so, so what changed? Not going to lie. I, I will stop everything I'm doing for Matlock. I would. There you go. <laughs> I would. I'd watch it. I'd stop. So what changed? Like, what is different? Why are detective shows different? Why are they not the way you know we saw? I, I haven't seen a detective show that allows us to think this is a detective show. What right. changed society? I mean, people aren't they don't want anything as simple as bad guy versus good guy, bad guy catches bad guy, or uh, you know, there's no flow, there's to it. it's just there is a beginning and there is an end, you know. All the you know, but now it's just like people are more tapped into the world of how it really is. That's cool. And it's just like society has changed where people are just like, ah, this is hokey, this is old school. And you know, some people can't appreciate that. Where it was just like, hey, if it wasn't for shows like Dragnet or the streets of San Francisco, I could name four or five, you know, like I said before, Mannix. And there would be no Riptide or Magnum PI. Yeah. And then when there's that, there would be no Hawaii Five O that you know pred- uh, pre- you know before that. And it's just it's an ebb and flow. I mean, I'm sure they'll be back to a time where they you know find a way it'll be a good old fashioned you know Miami hey Vice we're doing East. we're doing too much modern drama. Yeah. Let's take it back to a simpler time. We can go old school and just you know this is how it used to be. Sure, yeah. later, motherfucker. Main characters, too. I think the main characters had a lot to do with it. And again, oh, it's way different for us because when we were growing up, we had the limited channel base to choose from. So I'm not going to say that I was forced to watch these shows, but they were there. They were present. They were intriguing. Yes, sir. And, and that Files, makes, Tom Selleck. Yeah. Makes it and like, and like, you know, odds are when you were growing up, there was one TV in the house and you had no say over what you were watching. If your exactly. parents were watching, were yeah, watching exactly. this show, hey, either you sit down and watch us or yeah. you can go kick rocks with your friends. Yep. So, and that, and that is where Matlock came from there you because <laughs> my mom was a huge, huge fan of Matlock. And Perry Mason. So that was like Oh, it. Perry Mason, there man. Perry yeah, Mason, man. Like that. when that was on TV, I better shut up and sit down and wait till it's done. Don't ask right. a question. Right. Nope. Sit there. Watch this show. It's done. I used to, I used to get yelled at. Uh, my mom would yell at me with Agatha Christie. She'd say, Agatha Christie, <laughs> murder mysteries. Steven, shut up. Yeah. Well, they make it seem like they're actually part of the investigation, and, it was, it was, and if you distract yeah. them or whatever, yeah. the criminal will get away because Stephen was playing. It was so dude, it was so, aw- it was so <laughs> awesome. It'd be like the tr- was it the train of Busan? Yeah, the zombie. Yeah, what Japanese? Blah, blah. Yeah, I was trying. To... Yeah, because there was. Train? Um, all right, I'll give you that one, but. I'm sure there was, there was out no. <laughs> we're talking about murder and mysteries. <laughs> yeah, but how do you get the zombie? In? <laughs> because it all goes. Back. <laughs> I told you it would go off the rails at some point, didn't I? <laughs> I mean, come on now. We know there was no pause button, there was yeah. no rewind. 
That's right. You had to sit there and watch it. And if you missed it, guess what? You You missed it. You missed it. That shit wasn't coming on for another six months until they did a repeat. I really think that joke landed and he didn't let me have it. (sighs) Dick. It's a nice day. I'll I'll allow it. (laughs) In protest of the court. (laughs) Oh, my God. does not agree with that. I don't know. I just, and that's why I just, I I wanted to have this topic with you guys just because I really, it's it's a very, it's a very solid topic for us to have because not just how close we are in age and everything like that, but we have kind of the same views on how movies TV shows, how all these things should relate to the viewers. Mm -hmm. And I mean, I think we can all be in agreement that what's out there now isn't for the viewers. It's, it's for ratings. Yeah. And it's for, it's for the sheer numbers of we can get 30 million people to watch this show but it just doesn't have that same feel as the older stuff. It just doesn't. It does kind of bounce back to consumerism and just wanting that nothing is not enough. It wasn't scary enough to have uh, a babysitter killer. Then it had to go to mass murders. Then it, you know, it went from mass murders to like, let's, yeah. I'll, I'll go back to Steve's joke, where it had to be zombies coming in hordes. It just wasn't good enough or scary enough. Yeah. To have this, this, and this, people were like, well, what else do you got? We've seen this before. Right. Give me something new. And whether it was good or bad, yeah, that's up for discussion. But and, and you know what? To, to that point, when they said, bring us something new, that was about the time that Criminal Minds came out. Right. Criminal Minds is a okay. very good series. I enjoyed that one, too. And that gives you more of the twist that gives you the psychosis of everything right which was different than everything else that was out there but here we are again i think they've all run their course yeah and i think we're all waiting for okay what's and there's what so is many the good shows that they don't even give a chance to develop the characters or to make you interested in it like there's one show i was so bummed about it i just they can't after two seasons called the prodigal son where it's okay. kind of like, kind of like a Hannibal Lecter type thing, where they're using a, a convicted murderer to help them solve crimes, and there's a family issue in between, and it was it was really interesting to sit down and watch. And before you get a chance to get into it, it's like, oh, great, it's gone. Now what? Yeah, and I get to find out what what Snooky and the gang are doing. Great. <laughs> so what? <laughs> so, <laughs> Dick. <laughs> see that's funny it's, it's funny <laughs> what's going on at the shore yeah so what what changed with the cop drama what story changed with the cop drama i think it's always been great there's always been a murder mystery let's get the good guy let's get the bad guy That's always been there. But I see like with NCIS and all the new stuff, what changed? And Tice touched on this about, well, now it's about germs. Now it's about this. So the cop drama changed. Honestly, here's something that I was knocking around with when I first found out we were doing this discussion. The Manson family murders. That happened at a time where it was, it was the summer of love. Everything was supposed to be everybody getting along with each other. I mean, yeah, the Vietnam War and stuff. And then this horrific crime happened. And that was like the first murder thing, that, you know, that happened that was brought out to everybody in the world and made them realize, yeah. holy shit, there are monsters out there committing these crimes. It's not fiction anymore. And then point. once... And then once, you know, that happens, then it's just like, okay, like I said before, what else do you got? 
Does you that know, does that change fiction? No, it, it speaks more towards the audience than it does the actual content. Metal. Right. I think it's yeah. you know, thirty years ago we were happy throwing a turkey in the oven and waiting twelve hours till I, now it's like I want my microwave popcorn in two minutes. I gotta have it now, and it's just it's such a it's a microwave society. I guess you could say you want everything instantaneously. You want it in your face. You want you know I don't want this long drawn out speech. I want these guys figuring out the crime and did dirty, give me satisfaction. Did Dirty Harry and the nastiness of the 70s drama conquer noir? I mean, he kind of had his foot in the whole detective thing, but he was the guy who, he didn't bend the rule. He broke every one of them and just did it his own way. Rules be damned, right? You know, I'll, I'll get my ass chewed out by the chief or whatever, but wow. I'll still have a job tomorrow. Yeah, you know, yeah. now if one guy does that in a TV show, you got internal affairs after him, you got the yeah. Yeah. chief of justice, you got you know, it's just not going to happen in this day and age, right? Yeah, all right, you, you saw something, Matt. Tell me, you saw something, man. No, we're good. I am, I am. Exactly where I wanted to be in this segment. I am happy with how everything went. I liked seeing all the different point of views of where we're at. And I think what what the final thought really for me is, you know, with the help of both of you, yes, the change, probably 80% of the change from shows that drew me in to the shows now that I could, I could do without is the overall change in society. Yeah. 